In this video, we're going to start another simple yet fun project in 3DC printing, but we're going to take a slightly different approach than what we've done before, and that is to use an image rather than a primitive to create an object. I want to start a new scene. We'll go to the splash screen here and choose Import Image as a Mesh. Before I do that, we'll go to Google and look up a logo that we want to use uh, to create a pendant for a necklace. So I'll type in the logo I'm interested in using. Let's use this one. And that one's a little bit low in scale. I'll choose this one. It's a little bit larger. And it still has a transparent background. One thing I should mention, when you use this feature, it's always a good idea to Keep your colors rather solid because 3DC printing is going to convert this to grayscale internally. So if you've got a lot of different gradients and a lot of different colors and details, then it can create problems in generating this properly. So let's choose view image and save image. I've already done that. So I'll go back to 3DC printing, click import image as a mesh. And the main parameters we want to be concerned with is the stencil texture. We don't have to choose this bottom one. If we want it to be the same all the way through, just choose this top one. And 3DC printing will automatically fill this in with the same image. If you want to apply some tapering, you can do that here, as well as basic thickness. And if you have some bump texture, uh, you can adjust the thickness here. Okay, so we'll leave everything else at the default and hit OK. And it's going to place it right here in the Vox Tree layer panel. So this first one I don't necessarily need. Now that we have this, I'm going to create a copy of it to use as a ear at the top so that a necklace can be threaded through it. To do that, I want to create a clone of this. I'll go to the bottom of the Vox Tree layer panel and I see this little duplicate icon. I'll click on it and I will click this second icon on this parent layer and ghost it. What that does is it creates transparency. It also has the default mode of disabling action and picking. So you can't pick it and you cannot modify it. But in this case, we do want to change that. We're going to make some modifications to it here shortly. I need to go to a top view. So let's go to the camera menu and select top. We can also use our hotkey, which is the 7 key on your number pad. And I also want to go to orthographic view because as you can see here, we have perspective distortion. If we need to make a selection all the way through or maybe cut all the way through, as you probably know from other 3D applications, it's always a good idea to step into orthographic view to do that. So when I click that little cube here in the navigation bar or the 5 key on your number pad, you can see how that removes all that perspective distortion. Now it's oriented sideways. As you can see here, this logo has this point here at the top. So I could go over here to the tool options panel and rotate it that way. But let's try a different way here. Let's left mouse click and hold on the widget. In this case, we want to use the rotation widget. Hold and hit the space bar. Now I can enter the value. And there we go. Actually, I need to do it for this one too. Same thing, left mouse click. I should have done that before I duplicated it, but that's okay. There we go. Now, let's go to our copy here. And I wanna scale it along two axes, but not the Z axis, the up axis. So, scale Y, let's try 30%. And same thing here. Bring it to the top, maybe rotate it. I can use this inner ring to move in screen space. And now I'll go to the parent layer because I want to cut through it to expose these openings. To do that, I'm going to go to the adjust section and choose the cutoff tool. In the E panel, the polygonal lasso will probably work best. So I'll just click. I probably want to smooth it one time 
But before I do that, I want to convert this to voxel mode. And the reason for that is whenever you merge objects together in 3DC printing, it's a good idea to convert your layers to voxel mode because with voxels, it's very fast, it's trouble-free, it's very flexible, you have no problems at all. But when you're in surface mode, you're working with geometry only, and it does sometimes have problems merging objects together, and it can be much slower. Because of that reason alone, we're going to make the switch. I'll just hit OK. And I'll do the same thing here. And I'll select another tool. There we go. Now with that done, we want to merge these two together. There are a couple different ways that we can do this. One is I can right click and choose Merge Visible. The other way is to go to the right side of the layer of the object you want to actually move and hold down the Shift key while you click and drag right on top of the layer you want to merge it to. And that's all there is to it. It's now one solid object. So I'll zoom in and I'll hit the W key to turn wireframe on. You can see that it indeed is fused together. So we are just about ready to export. Before I do that, I want to go to the bottom and smooth all. And that's just going to smooth out the rough edges that we may have on this model. You don't necessarily have to take that step. But we are now ready to export. So let's go to the File menu and Export for 3D Printing. We'll use our default values and hit OK. Here is our pendant being printed. And the final result. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.